you're gonna, you're going to announce it right now. Okay, Galatians chapter six, starting at verse. Where are we at here? That's ten. Starting at verse nine, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. I'll keep reading a little bit. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the of the household of faith. But it says right there, uh, Galatians 6, chapter 6, verse 9, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So let me read my comments for a minute, and then you can add a little to it. Go ahead, Steve. I was going to ask you, what do you reap? You reap a harvest. And what's your harvest? Your harvest is the fruit of what you're being patient with. And I'm going to jump ahead of you again. And tell 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 them the fruits of the Spirit is the harvest. Well, that is the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, temperance, patience, and all that. We spoke about that a minute ago. But with my comments real quick, Galatians 6, 9, don't be impatient about anything because at the right time, God will show up and show off in behalf of you. So the Bible specifically says that. He says he'll show up and show off in behalf of you. And don't be impatient about anything. Go ahead. Go ahead. You'll defend you too. Absolutely. It's just like, and I'll go back to the example again. If I would have done it my way, okay? Frank Sinatra once sang, and that was saying, I did it my way. If I would have done it my way, do you think they would have yeah, ever... Up- God... Go ahead. God said, tell you this, if you would have done, your, done, your, done it your way, it probably would never work. That's what I was going to get at. If I would have done it my way, do you think it would have updated at all? No. My would have been is my way would have been is Raider Republic looks really great. I love their iframe. I'm done. Let's do it. And then it was never updated. And then my listeners would not like the app. So if I would have done it my way, it would have it would have failed miserably. How many times, Steve, have you done something Steve's way? And Steve's way never oh. turned out the way you wanted it. All right. I remember the time I worked on a car, and instead of taking me like maybe five or six hours, it took me almost two weeks or a week. And then I got so frustrated, I got started swearing towards God. I was just so mad. And soon I calmed down and everything. I was, I was finished, you know. Yeah, it's teaching me a light, teaching me a lesson again to be patient. I tried things my way, Steve, and it did not turn out the way I wanted it to. But then I did exactly did it exactly because there are times and how many times that God said, you know, Steve, you got to do it like this. But you ignored God and you said, okay, I'm doing it this way because I know this way will work. But then God goes, comes up to you with this still soft voice, but do it this way. He said, I'm doing it this way because I know this way will work work the last time. But God well, says, because you're comfortable with it. Right. And God says, do it this way. Finally, you give up and you break down because it doesn't work. And you finally say, okay, I'm doing it that way, Lord. You no, know, wait a minute. It works. I should have done it that way 10 hours ago. <laughs> right. You got to tell you how to do shortcuts. Right, God knows all shortcuts to everything. God's perfect in every aspect. So when God tells you to do something, don't shrug it off and say, I'll do it this way because it worked before. Just because it worked one time before doesn't mean it'll work again. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever, say we were writing writing a letter or something, you put a pencil down. Yeah. Or looking for something or... And... It's a really important because you write a letter to whatever you who you're writing to, or even doing a mm, study of scripture, you know. Okay. And all of a sudden, you can't figure where that person went to. 
And all of a sudden, man, you know, you look and you look and you're going through drawers. Everything. We'll say it's only pencil in the whole place, you know. Where'd that pencil go to? And all of a sudden, you, know, you prayed about it. And then you said, God, I can't find this pencil, you know. And you're angry. But so you're still praying, but you're still angry. But God says, tells you, take a rest, you know. So you take a rest, you take a break, break, you know, slow you down. Sorry, I got mad. Now you go back to that table, and there, that pencil's right there in front of you. Amen. Amen. But what I was going to say also is, like, if you, just because it worked one way before, it does not mean it'll work again. And here's a good example. When I was a kid once uh, at the uh, Havenwick Hospital in uh, Auburn Hills, Michigan, well, Auburn Hills slash Pontiac, because it was on the actual border. Our our TV room was half Pontiac and half uh, Auburn Hills. And uh, I was in my room one day, and I had a balloon, and I had uh, a toilet paper tube, and uh, some other stuff, and I wanted to make something, because you know me, Steve, I'm always making something. But I wanted to make something that would float around the room and fly around and do some stuff. So I had a buddy of mine. Uh, tie the string around the balloon, not too tight, but not too loose. So he did the best he could. And then I tied that to a toilet paper tube, poked some holes and tied it into the toilet paper tube and then put a little bottom on there. So I had me like a hot air balloon, right? So I blow this thing up and I hold the, the nozzle and I put the, the basket on the bed, the little basket I made and I let go. And the balloon went just at the right amount of air to where it lifted off the bed and floated around the room. And then as soon as the air left the balloon, it fell to the ground, but it flew around the room. It literally flew around the room just like a regular hot air balloon did. So I loved it. And I and I took it out and I showed all my other friends. I blew it up and it soared around the room again. Finally, it popped. The balloon finally popped. And to this day, I can never recreate that ever again. But like I said, just because it worked then doesn't mean it'll work again. To this day, I can never get it to do exactly that ever again. It will never do the same thing. But it worked once. But just because, right. and that's what you call a fluke, just because it happened once doesn't mean it'll happen again. Everything don't work the same twice and three times sometimes. Sometimes God does no. lets that work for a reason, and then now it doesn't because he wants you doing it his way. Yeah, the only thing that works again and again is Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Like the old saying goes, either my way or the highway, it's either his way or the highway. There is no my way no more. We can't keep doing our way because if we keep doing our way, God's yeah, going to look at us and son, I mean, <laughs> say it again. It's like the song going way to heaven. Right. But if we keep God eventually to hell. Right. Eventually though, how many times can God continue watching us doing it our way and it doesn't work to where eventually he's gonna get tired of us? How long can God do that? Eh, don't get me wrong, God 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 will forgive us, but eventually it's just like sinning. Eventually God's gonna take one look and you say, I'm so sick of tired of uh uh, so and so over there, uh, Susie so and so over there is sinning so much. I I, I give her up. Go ahead. Here's a question for you. And this question is probably what, we're, probably what we're preaching about already. Are you trainable? As in trainable? Yes, I'm trainable and teachable. I, Stephen, what you call, yeah. I'm what you call fat. I am fat in the word. There I am faithful. Go. I am teachable. Faithful, available, and teachable. I'm fat. In that Lord, aspect, Steve, you don't have to lose weight. He's spent a word with God, like, like like other people out there just having milk and cookies. Absolutely, and the meat's a word. See, I'm so fat in the word, I don't even have to lose weight. <laughs> but yeah, I'm faithful. I'm available and teachable, no matter what. And it, it, it just goes to say that I am always and one. Just goes to so show that. And Dr. Simon and Trish spoke about this last night as well. And it doesn't really pertain to what we're talking about right now, but I mean, it doesn't pertain about right. being patient, 
but we spoke about that a little bit. But how do you know that you're a Christian? Hey, how do you know you're a Christian, Andrew? I'm asking you, how do you know that you're a Christian? Let me ask you a question. Well, put it this way. We, we, you already asked these questions. Put it this way. Let's ask some people out there. Hey, how do you know you're a Christian? Could you believe? Question. Are you doing God's works? Question. Can you do God's works and still believe or believe not? Question. Do you have a relationship with God or not? Question. Are you having patience? Question. You know, are you doing? Here's the best question of all: Are you doing God's will in the fruits of the spirit? Good question. So I can't remember everything. Is he they your s- Lord and Savior? Absolutely. It's not a question. I can't remember everything they said, but they said that how do you know you're Christian is because of sin. He says because they said because if if you as a Christian, a, Andrew, I can give you. Question. And you get an answer. No, it's good. You know, those who are Christians or non Christians or believers, would you die for Christ? Absolutely. You take your child, would you take your child that the Lord told you and sacrifice it to God? That would be one of the hardest things to do, like but. It, if God asked me to, then I would have to. It would be one of the hardest things to do, though. Yeah. And a lot of people say, probably say no. That would be well, one of the God hardest things. Oh, I know. I see you wouldn't do that. But they never know what you do. Because he's God. See, the reason, one of the reasons why, and that's what they says, the reason why you know you're a Christian is because of sin. Because when you sin, God will always take those that he loves and chastise them. That's how you know you're a Christian. Because if we weren't Christians right now, I guess we would be. In hell. Yeah, or dead in hell. Or, you know. And if you weren't a Christian and you're still sinning, will God chastise you? Absolutely not. You're not part of his family anymore. You're done being part of his family. You, He turned you over to a reprobate mind. Therefore, if you're sinning, he ain't going to chastise you because there's no need to because you're not one of his anymore. You're part of the dark side. You, you're, you're, as, right. as the old saying goes, you're part of Darth Vader. <laughs> <sighs> Look, I am your father. But you're part of the dark side. So he, he there's no reason to chastise you. The only thing he's going to do at the end of the time when you finally meet him is, get thou behind me, I do not know you work of iniquity, leave. And that's the only thing he's going to do. But and the reason tell, why you know... Did he tell Luke, I'm your son. You're my son. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason why you know you're Christian is because of sin. Because when you sin... Being one of God's people, He'll chastise you in no time flat. You ever, you ever done something, Steve, and uh, you did something wrong, and then it just ate at you and ate at you every time you thought yeah. about it. Yeah. I think about David and so Bathsheba. God tells you, so God tells you to repent as fast as possible. Right. Think about David and Bathsheba. Do you know that after he laid with Bathsheba, have you had Uriah killed? We're we're not going to talk entirely about this today because that might be next week's topic. And I had Uriah killed on the front line just to cover up his sin. But did you know that as the year went, because it took about a year before God uh, confronted him on it. But as that year went, it it so bothered him so much that he wrote two psalms about his condition, and he said, and he said in those psalms, it was like a train wreck. He said it was that bad, and that's the way sin should be. If you're a Christian, and you love God, that right. sin should be in your conscience so much it should be eating you alive. Yeah, you should be desiring to get. Think, go ahead. Those who think you're getting away, you know, I guess Sam, like those who think that you can take advantage. Of a prophet or a pastor or a man of God or a woman of God or God's child. Boy, 
you know, you're in trouble with God. 